From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Hello there, and welcome to Ropecast, a podcast about English. Hello, Peter. Hello, Roger. Peter, we were talking some time ago about tests of English. Right. And I, I still don't really know much about this one you call IELTS, is it? IELTS or I-E-L-T-S. They call it English for International Opportunity on the website. <laughs> yeah. So what kind of opportunity would that? Would it just be for people going to study in an English-speaking country? Well, no, not necessarily. There are actually two formats of the IELTS ah, test. Right. There is an academic format, yeah. and this one tests a person's ability to study in English at an undergraduate or postgraduate level. So yeah. this is for entering a university. Yeah. And there's the general training format, and this is suitable for people who are going to an English-speaking country in order to work or to train at below undergraduate level. And it's also used for immigration purposes in Canada and Australia. Wow. So yeah, so if you range, want to emigrate yeah. to Australia, then IELTS is the one to take. Right. And this tests all of the different skills? Yes, it does. It tests listening, reading, writing, and speaking. Yeah. But the two different formats differ in reading and writing. I see. So in the reading and writing section for the academic format, you actually are tested on academic reading. So you're given a, let's say, university text, a textbook text. Yes. And academic writing, you may write an essay or that sort of thing. That would be the university type of essay. Whereas the general test format will just test your general writing abilities and general reading abilities. So somebody going to get perhaps work experience in an English-speaking country could do the non-academic one. Right. And somebody wanting to study would do the academic one. That's it. Right. That said, of course, it may help you in your career even if you have only taken the academic one. Mm -hmm. But if you want to study at a university, you must take the academic one. Right. Does it matter what country you're based in? Can you always take this test somewhere locally? Um, basically, you can take it anywhere in the world. The IELTS website claims that they have test centers in 120 countries yeah. and over 500 testing locations. So there's quite a lot to choose from. Still, there may be quite a bit of travel involved depending on where you live. So it may take you, I don't know, two or three hours to go yeah. to a test center. So there are still fewer test centers for this organization than for the TOEFL test, the American-based. Yes, especially since currently TOEFL is expanding. Yeah. They are trying to create more test centers right now. And, for example, this is what I know in Germany, I think, I think IELTS has around about 10, a dozen test centers. So that would be a little bit less than TOEFL has now. Used to be the other way around, though. Right. Well, thanks for that further information. Yeah, you are very welcome. Bye. Bye-bye for now. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.